Welcome everyone to the April meeting of the Franklin Grandau Community Partnership. Um, we're going to start the meeting a little different this morning. For those of you that read the email and or the agenda that came to you last week, you'll notice in, introduction, in introductions, it doesn't say what you're grateful for. It says favorite candy. What? Now, the reason for that, the reason for that is we all know April here in uh, St. Albans and Franklin County is the Maple Festival and sweet and all of that. So we thought, well, we'll take it a step further and we'll ask people what their favorite candy is. Something a little different. And after you are done, if you'd like, there's a bowl in the back there of candy that you can uh, eat to your heart's delight. There's also coffee over there as well to balance it. So uh, with that, as usual, what we will do is we will do introductions, your name, title, organization, and favorite candy. You have 40 seconds to do it. If you can't do it in 40 seconds, of course, our famous bell. And then uh, anyone who's a first time attendee will also get the bell. So with that, uh, Melinda, if you'll take us through Absolutely. those on the screen. Absolutely, thank you, Joe. So we'll start with people on the screen first. And I see Karen Garrett. Good morning. Um, can you guys hear me okay? We can. Yes. Okay, so Karen Garrett, I'm a public health nurse for the Department of Health um, with a focus of uh, school health and chronic disease. And my favorite candy is Skittles. Night, nice. fruit and vegetable group. <laughs> <laughs> Karen, is this your first meeting? This is my first meeting. Okay, well, right. welcome. Welcome. Yeah, I'm trying to turn the camera on, but it's not cooperating, so I apologize for that. No. So we don't get to see or sing. Uh, we'll reserve the song and dance portion for newcomers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well. Okay, the next person is Matthew. Yes, greetings, you know. My favorite candy is Reese's Peanut Butter Club. And uh, I network with, you know, uh, UBMC. Yeah, I work on, work on a paid employee of the state of Vermont and UVM Autism Cloud Task Force, which I'm a researcher for the state of Vermont statewide. So, yes, you know, I'm lucky to be here with you and I look forward to, you know, researching what can we do moving forward to get better services throughout Vermont statewide. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. I wish you were with us because we brought Reese's peanut butter cups in, but I'll have one for you. Uh, next person is Jackie. Hi, I'm Jackie. I'm the emergency parent specialist at the Office of Local Health. Um, and I would agree my favorite candy are probably Reese's as well. Nice. Everybody going for the protein group. <laughs> okay, and Christina James. <laughs> Oh, actually, I think she may have, I think mean, she might have had to hop off. Okay, Christina did hop off. Um, next person is Jen. Hi, I'm Jen. I'm the R Care Coordinator at Notch Primary Care, and my favorite candy would be peanut butter M&Ms. Yum. All right, and next person is Michelle. Hi, Michelle Trey, I'm Parent Child Center at Northwestern House and Support Services. I'm going to break up the peanut butter fast here because I'm allergic to peanut butter. So my favorite chocolate is from Vermont Nut Free Chocolates. <laughs> nice. Okay. And next person is Janine. Hi, I'm Janine. I'm the Director of Development and Communications for Vermont Adult Learning. Uh, and this is my time of year because I am a fool for Cadbury Mini Eggs. Oh, yes. <laughs> Protein group. Okay, Beth. Hi, um, I am a database curator and a marketing specialist at Vermont 211. And my favorite candy is anything with dark chocolate. So fill in the blank. And chocolate, going heart healthy. Okay, Tamar. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tamar Bouchard. I am the Transitional Housing Coordinator for Voices Against Violence. Um, I like the very controversial licorice that people love to hate. 
Um, also, this time of year, those Cadbury Robin's eggs are like amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Marshmallow Cadbury Robin's eggs. Good morning, everybody. I'm chuckling because I'm like, yeah, I want chocolate now. <laughs> uh, so I'm Marcy Caulfield. I'm a military winter consultant for the state of Vermont. I work for the Vermont National Guard uh, in support of military families. And I'm on the holiday season bandwagon with Kimmy. It's my ultimate uh, favorite in honor of today being National Caramel Day, is Cadbury Caramel Eggs mm. they are making about this time of year. Um, and there's just some, I know that Cadbury also does like a milk chocolate with caramel, but there's just something about those eggs that that caramel is superb. <laughs> oh, that sounds good. <laughs> Thanks, Marcy. Barry. Uh, Barry Lemke, Housing for All, based at the Northwest Regional Planning Commission. Uh, I have some pretty high standards when it comes to candy, so if it's shaped like a bunny, I'll eat it. <laughs> I love it. Nicole. Hey, this is Nicole Cunningham. I'm the Medical Center as the My Healthy VT Regional Coordinator for Frank Lake Grand Isle and Memorial County. And this time of year, my favorite chocolate is Cadbury eggs. <laughs> nice. Okay. And Haley. Hi, good morning, everybody. I'm Haley Schreiner. I'm the Shinger Pronouns and the Resource Coordinator with the Working Bridges Program at the Night Free of Northwest Vermont. I feel completely overwhelmed by this question. <laughs> There's so many good choices. Um, but the other day, I had a holiday joy, and that was really delicious. But another day, it will be something else. So, uh -huh. That was both the nut and the fruit. Marianne. I'm Marianne DiMaggio with the Community College of Vermont. And this is a tough question, but I want to go with Swedish fish. Oh. Oh. Okay, <laughs> Sophia. I'm Sophia Sir. I'm the admin coordinator over at Financial Futures at CBOEO, and I'm a big fan of Twix. Wow, those are so good. So, Sophia, is this your this first so meeting? Yes, it is. Wow. Welcome. What's that? It might be Nicole's first meeting. Nicole, is it your first meeting too? I, is it your first oh, time here? Oh my gosh, Nicole, I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah, my, yeah, my mistake too. Yes, Nicole. Trying to sneak under the radar. Yeah, see, I get to see her in other meetings, so I didn't realize it. And I'm so excited you're with us. Okay, Megan. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Megan Bridges, Community Impact Manager at United Way of Northwest Vermont. Um, I had a solid answer, and then Marianne threw me because I love Swedish fish, but I have always loved Kit Kats, and when they added dark chocolate to Kit Kats about a year ago, oh, and they're mm -hmm. hard to find, but if you find them, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Megan. Katie. I'm Katie DeForge, and I'm from the Point of Wicked County. And my favorite type of uh, candy this time of year are the um, Reese egg shaped ones. Mm. Mm. Love it. Mm. Thank you, Katie. And the next person is, let me just scroll down. Ah, uh, Courtney. Hi, good morning, everybody. This is Courtney O'Brien. I'm the QI practice facilitator um, with the Blueprint team for the St. Albans Health Service area. And I will say my favorite candy all year round is always Reese's, but I especially like the holiday themed ones because they have more peanut butter in them. Yes. Awesome. Thank you, Courtney. And I do see, um, oh, Deb Grennan just joined us. I just summoned Deb Grennan using my so we're sharing instead of our gratitude although i think everybody's grateful for what we're sharing about we're sharing our favorite candy oh thank you for letting me in late sorry about that everybody um i was caught up in doing attendance so uh anyway uh 
So my favorite candy, I'm, yeah, I'm grateful to be here. Grateful you let me in. Um, and <laughs> my favorite candy, I would have to go with the Reese's, um, the Reese's all year long as well. Yeah. Okay. Peanut uh, M&Ms are a close second, but. Awesome. Yeah. All right. And I see the person on the phone, on the phone number that said you called in, and I apologize, I didn't hear your name earlier when before the meeting started, but if you could unmute. Hi, good morning. My name is Monica Stutz. I'm a family witness support assistant for the uh, Army Reserve. Um, my favorite candy is a coffee crisp. Oh, in Canada. she Ooh. took my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Is there anybody that I missed on the phone or on the Zoom? Sorry. Did oh Courtney? Sorry, Courtney Manahan. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Courtney Manahan. I am the community relations coordinator at Northwestern Medical Center. And my favorite candy is also Reese's, but I particularly like the like the Easter eggs that are out right now, or the Christmas trees, like the holiday specific ones are my favorite. Great. Okay, did I miss anyone else? Okay, so we're gonna go to the room now. And I will start uh, to my left with me. Um, I'm Amanda, I work at the St. Albans Health Center as a community health worker. And mine would probably be Twizzlers. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Kylie Brennan. I am the nurse care coordinator at the St. Albans Health. And I think this is a particularly hard question. Ask Jen to fill our office with candy and I eat it all. <laughs> um, <laughs> chocolate would have to be Aug Joy, but candy would have to be Sour Patch Kids. Mm. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> Hi everybody, my name is Amy Brewer. I coordinate the Franklin Rendell Tobacco Prevention Coalition as a health educator at NMC and I'm the local regional coordinator for Safe Routes to School um, for local motion. And my favorite candy, as many people know, um, are peppermint patties. I was recently, not recently, long ago I was bribed to be on the pelt. <laughs> we have a bag of peppermint patties, that is all it took. Right? To be on the pelt? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Long time ago. <laughs> I, I, I want that many peppermint patties. Yeah. 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 But that's the part of you. Bribe to be on the pelt? Angela, what was her last name? Baker. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know, John. French fries every month. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Over 15 years. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Faith. Good morning. I'm Faith Dubois. I'm a community health worker with the Abnaki Nation of Missisquoi. And I had never met a chocolate that I didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Crystal Lampman. I'm the executive director of Franklin County Caring Communities. They actually don't make my favorite chocolate anymore. It's the Nestle's with almond. Oh. Oh. The, white, the white chocolate. Wow. Are you talking about chocolate? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Just, yeah. Candy. 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 Just kind of sneaks in here. <laughs> so we're sharing instead of our gratitude, Denise, we're introducing our name and then our favorite candy or chocolate. Or... Just did this at a meeting the other day. Um, oh, is she next? Yeah. Yeah. Am I next? Oh, yeah. we're done with those. Everybody on Zoom. We were done. Oh, I'm we sorry. In the room. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I have to tell you, I have to tell you how bad my day's gone. Who's been thinking about chocolate for the last I have been trying to get this device that I've had a hard time with for three months, I guess it is, to move, and I forgot that Alan said, I'll take care of all of the close-ups and whatever. So this I'm trying to get to work, and it won't. And that's why I'm a little off he keeps, here. He keeps fooling with it, and every once in a while, the, the, <laughs> view, the view moves, and he goes, oh, wait a minute, what am I doing right? What am I doing wrong? <laughs> okay. All right. Sorry about that. Denise, please continue. I'm sorry. Is it my turn? It yeah. is your turn. Yeah. All right. So here's my answer. Are you going to introduce yourself? Denise Smith, uh, blueprint <laughs> population health at NMC. 
Um, okay, so it's a complicated question because I love all chocolate. It's not, you know, but I really love um, Snickers bars when I'm in the United States. However, if I go to Canada, Aero bars mm. are my favorite. Ooh. Yep. And Aero might actually top Snickers bars, to be totally honest. Oh, they're so good. And then I love all dark chocolate. So that's why I mostly mm. eat is dark chocolate. And somebody just gave me, there's a new company in Burlington. Yes. And somebody, new chocolate? I can't know. That's like a new car. I don't know what it's New called. is not new. And you, it's, it's been there a while. It's oh, it's a lot new. <laughs> anyway, somebody just gave me a box of truffles from there. And I hid them like everybody in my quick. family. Because mm -hmm. Tim is a sweet tooth, so he'll eat every, any time yes. I bring chocolate home, he'll eat it. <laughs> Sorry, that's a complicated <laughs> answer. I cannot answer it. So I, that's it. But Snickers, if we're in the U.S., and we are, so that's, and we are, and we are, so these Snickers. We very shared the link just in case anybody wants it. Two chocolate. <laughs> oh, thanks, <laughs> Barry. <laughs> I'm gonna order those, but not for a gift for anyone. <laughs> that's it. And I need coffee, so I'm gonna get up. Yes, please. <laughs> Disrupt There's one chocolate. More time. There's so. chocolate too, Denise. Oh, there it is. <laughs> You brought chocolate today? Oh, look at this. Excellent. I brought healthy chocolate. chocolate. That's right. There's some protein group over there. Right. Okay, Hadley. Sorry. sorry to disrupt. Hi, I'm Hadley. I'm the executive director for Franklin Grand Isle Bookmobile. Um, and I have a sweet tooth. So at the moment, it's nerds and jelly beans, but it might change. Okay. Fruit and vegetable group. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I'm Becky Gadju. I'm from Champlain Valley Head Start. I'm actually the home visiting supervisor, so I supervise all home visitors from the bottom of Lake Champlain to the top of Lake Champlain. Um, I really love chocolate, all generally speaking, but definitely my favorite is Reese's. Mm -hmm. um, and being that it's Easter, I love the Cadbury mini eggs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, forgot about that. Let's get on there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Devin Bevins. I am a primary prevention specialist with Vermont National Guard, focusing on violence prevention. And my favorite candy, hands down, is hot tamales. I don't know what food group that belongs to. <laughs> When they go on sale at CVS by two get one free, you'll know where to find it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm uh, Mary Pickner, the substance use prevention consultant for Franklin and Grand Isle County. And you know, I think I could for the most part, there's not a chocolate I don't like. I don't like coconut chocolate, but I too, um, I grew up loving uh, Yorkie bars with uh, raisin and biscuits in it, so that's my all-time favorite, along with um, it's a violet crumble, but what, I don't know what they call it here. It's a honeycomb with chocolate. Oh, that yeah, is fantastic. Ooh. But, you know, because it's this time of year, Cadbury mini eggs are my current crack, which I forgot about. So somebody else mentioned it. <laughs> Shopping for every good addict, I'm going to go buy some yeah. before we're gone. <laughs> I'll go visit you at work later. Yeah. <laughs> I have to come to my home. You might share. Um, I'm Eric Peterson. I'm the regional director for Vermont Adult Learning in Franklin Grand Isle Counties. I was told I have 40 seconds, so I'm going to use my. Well, a lot oh, of time. Um, so yeah, I have a friend from the UK who usually goes home once or twice a year and comes back with all this ridiculous, crazy candy, the last of which we cannot get in the US. So the list of awesome things is too long to list in 40 seconds. But Digestive biscuits. Digestive biscuits. Digestive biscuits. Um, biscuits. You guys are eating up his 40 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally thinking about it. I know. Wait, so and what was the answer? So, uh, anything in the UK. There's too many to list. So, you know, it's interesting to me. British Cornish. Okay. Awesome. Mr. John. All right. Hi, uh, John Wharton, the Sheldon Methodist Church Food Shelf. 
Uh, does heavily frosted cake count as a candy? Absolutely, it's got sugar. <laughs> all right, all right, we're on. For those of you who like Reese's, zoom in here, buddy. The <laughs> <laughs> little square. The little square. Um, but I also, as a member of the pellet, I do want to use the rest of my 40 seconds because I would. Last night, I went to a place I'd never heard of, and I suspect none of you have ever heard of either. It's called the Highland Center for the Arts, and it is a very beautiful, uh, about 300 person uh, theater with a uh, with a entryway that had lots of art stuff it is in the middle of nowhere in northeast in the northeast kingdom, uh, about a mile south of Caspian Lake, and they had a middle school and high school bands and a middle school and high school chorus, and we went to uh, a concert that our granddaughter was singing in one of our granddaughters was singing in the chorus, and it was just just amazing. I mean, it's just in literally in the middle of nowhere, this big, beautiful theater. It was really cool. And a lot of you know the arts, you know, the arts, music and the arts really kind of suffered a lot during the pandemic. And a lot of schools here, a lot of schools around the state are really putting a lot of effort into trying to get kids reinterested and, you know, reinvolved in, in art. So they had art displays from, from grade school kids in the, out in the foyer. Uh, so it was, it was a lot of fun. Very fun. And it was just a marvelous place if you ever get a chance to go there. It's in Greensboro, Vermont. Yes, it's in Greensboro, Vermont. Vermont. Yeah, it's, about a, it's about a mile, about a mile south of Lake of Gaspian Lake. So is it safe to say that you like to eat Reese's at the Greensboro Theater for the yeah. day? And, they, and, they, had a, and they, had a, they had an Easter Bunny cake that you could buy pieces of. Before I go, <laughs> um, what I would like to uh, make people aware of is, you know, we used to have this meeting recorded, the presentation of this meeting recorded every month by Northwest Access Television prior to the pandemic. So we would have one of their terrific uh, staff members in here actually recording so we got better audio and video than trying to do it via the uh, recording uh, from Zoom. Then the pandemic hits, so the way we had to go, as you know, was everything we did was totally via Zoom and Melinda would record, we would send that in and that would air and local residents could, could watch and, and it was great, it was very, very good. However, to up the quality, Having Northwest Access TV back in the room today is uh, a huge, huge uh, home run for us, and I hope for them. Uh, so Alan Cunningham, the uh, tech coordinator, is here today. Yay! And um, he is recording. So uh, since Alan is here, uh, we need to know, Alan, uh, what is your favorite candy? <laughs> My favorite candy right now is Starburst. Starburst, hands <laughs> down. Sweet. Yeah, fruit and yeah, yeah. Melinda here in her fruit and vegetable. <laughs> okay, uh, my name is Joe Halco. I'm Director of Community Relations here at Northwestern Counseling and Sports Services. And my favorite candy, which has not been mentioned yet this morning, and by the way, it's hard. I think all of us who enjoy chocolates, I and mean, it's hard. And I love dark, dark chocolate and all that. but. My go-to, there's something about it, it's Butterfingers. Mm. All right, my name is Melinda White. I am the SAMHSA program manager at the Howard Center and a recovery coach in the emergency department through the Turning Point and Police Advisory Board, HR Board. Um, you trying to my... Brewer? <laughs> no, I'm just trying to put you in so <laughs> um, And actually, so Monica mentioned my fa my absolute favorite is Coffee Crisp, and then my second favorite are the Crunchy Bars and the, the Cadbury Crunchy Bars, and I don't see them in the States either. So I actually order these online to be shipped, and it's worth every ridiculous amount of high price dollars to get it to me because I love those Coffee Crisps. I get them for family members. Um, at the holidays, so Excellent. you can just drive across them. It's only fifteen minutes. Well, you know, before <laughs> I got recovery, <laughs> they so we like know all the stops. But there. before I got there. recovery, right. I decided they, they don't want me there. Time. So oh. maybe I can give you a few. Bucks. Yeah. I will get you some. Okay, okay. I, I, I always bring back a stash. You probably get like three, three times days. the amount if I give you the money versus ordering it online. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Tips, yeah. <laughs> can I ask a question? Was this your version of a protein bar? Yeah, yeah, because it's peanut butter. Yeah, yeah. 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 I just wanted to confirm because I was looking 
got her teeth on there. I didn't see that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you got it. Yeah. 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 Broaden your horizon. And there's an yeah. almond joy if you want a different flavor. And that's fruit and vegetable because it's got your coconut and your nut. Oh, okay. okay. So, babe, right. you're, you're in good shape you, for the day. This is why you let Melinda play with the puppy. <laughs> 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 Uh, okay, that was fun. Now, you know, um, typically we do do the, what we're grateful said, for. <laughs> and, <laughs> That's a Kristen Pryor thing right there. She's she so proud. <laughs> uh, typically we... <clears throat> we never have this express. much fun. We typically express our... I'm so glad I came in person today, I just have to say. <laughs> <laughs> I almost did Zoom, so I was going to be late, and I'm like, I want to go in yeah. person. Well, it's really great to have you here, and it's great to have everybody on Zoom. And by the way, speaking of what we've been through with the pandemic, this is one way of having a meeting that certainly we weren't doing prior to. So it really gives people who can't be here in person still the opportunity to be engaged. And I just, I think that's a great byproduct, if you, if you will, of something that's been brutal over the last few years. So, um, yeah. but yeah, what I want to say though is yes, we are honoring uh, Maple Month and the Maple festival and the sweetness and we tied the candy into it and all that sort of thing but I do want to give credit that this idea of your favorite candy actually came out of last month's uh, United Way of Northwest Vermont board meeting and the board members were asked on the spot what was your favorite candy I thought that was pretty cool so we had a little fun with it today as well and uh, it's just you know something a little different from what we typically do so so sweet Oh boy. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Let's move on to a minute approval of March of the March 1st meeting. And uh, which you all received in your packets and have here uh, at the table. So if I could uh, entertain a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Okay, Crystal and a second. Second. Denise. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, any opposed? <laughs> no. Okay, um, so now. <laughs> I love that we go through the motion of voting to approve the minutes. I know, I know. And it's, I, I know. With but it's, discussion, eyes and nays. <laughs> yeah. We're, try, we're <laughs> trying in a very, a very loose way, Amy, to follow <laughs> Robert's rules, you know, for a meeting, a gathering of sorts. I always think, like, I'm going to look and read the minutes, and then I look at it half, and I was like, I'm <laughs> Well, listen, I do the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine your chocolate wrong. It's so sweet. Uh, <laughs> six years I've been coming to these. It's never been a day. Next one. I'm going to say next. There's a correction. I think one time, yeah, one or, one or two times there's been a correction of sorts, but not a. What? How's your job doing? Okay. I'm sorry, guys. So, yeah, thank you, Amy. Oh, wow. yeah. Okay, so. This month, um, we're very, very fortunate to have Hadley Preby here. And Hadley, who is the executive, as she mentioned, the executive director of the Franklin Grand Isle Bookmobile. And all of you, I'm sure, are very familiar with the Bookmobile and uh, its travels over the years. Mm -hmm. And uh, Hadley is here to- Recording up in progress. <laughs> Hadley is here to update us on the changes within the Franklin Red Data Bookmobile. So, Hadley, the floor and screen is yours. Right, I'm just going to share my screen real quick. Does this work on Google? It should. Yeah. No. Okay. Got it. Um, so hi, I'm I'm Hadley, as I've said earlier, uh, and this is our bookmobile. Um, <clears throat> we 
just for a brief overview in case you don't know who we are, um, we are a mobile library and literacy organization that travels throughout Franklin and Grand Isle County. Uh, we bring books and stories for stronger hearts and braver minds. And um, all ages, you don't have to be little, you can be big. Uh, our mission is to promote a lifelong love of learning, um, and that also includes reading. Uh, building community connections by providing greater access to books, information, activities, and fun. Uh, because reading should be fun, and learning, I mean, it's a lot more, you learn a lot more when you are having fun, so... Um, and uh, today I'm just going to give a brief overview of some of our programs. Um, we, as I was making this list, I realized we do a lot more than I realized we did. <laughs> and I actually left some things off. <laughs> um, so I'm not, I don't have a slide for every single one of these, but I do have a slide for many. Um, also featuring a lot of children and the little boy on the screen right now, you will probably see three or four more times because he um, has actually grown through our programs. So our little readers program. Okay. Um, our little readers program uh, is birth through kindergarten. Um, we, I call it little, we call it little readers because it's literally what they are. They are, they are reading. Um, we focus on pre-literacy skills so that they have a solid foundation for when they start kindergarten. Um, we are transitioning what that looks like as the school districts transition into, um, into the science of reading. So, um, we are focusing on reading comprehension a little bit more and, you know, obviously letter sounds, rhyming words, how to turn pages, how to treat books correct, you know, correctly so you're not walking on them or throwing them at your friends, which, you know, happens. Um, <laughs> you know, and we also... As part of kindergarten readiness, we focus on empathy and friendship and sharing because those are hard when you're when you're new to the world, like everything should be about you and rightly so. But you do have friends and you, it's just a part of growing up. So um, one of our volunteers that's on the bookmobile is a retired kindergarten teacher. So she has helped you know, with the whole, this is how we share, and making sure that everyone feels included when she's helping with story time. Um, and these kids are a lot of fun. Uh, this is probably our biggest program. It's what we're most known for. Um, and we, I knew how many kids we had the other day, but I don't remember now. Um, but we, we do have about 12 regular stops, and we rotate them throughout every three weeks throughout the month. Um, and, you know, kids, as kids shift through daycare, it, our numbers do shift a little, but um, we're hoping to expand with some partnerships coming up um, for the new, for the, into the summer and the new school year. Um, once you start school, we still have fun. So we do have some after school programs that we offer to different schools. Um, a lot of our after school programs are not in St. Albans. Um, I don't think we've done one in St. Albans yet. Um, but we have gone to Franklin and Berkshire, Richford, Bakersfield, Enosburg, you know, north. <laughs> um, 
we try to make them literacy based as much as possible. Um, if I can find a book about the topic, it's a lot better. Um, some sometimes that's a little bit hard. Um, we do a program about international holidays. Um, so some holidays it's harder to find books about. Uh, so that that can be a little bit challenging to make that literacy based, but um, <clears throat> the after school programs are generally K through six. Um, we, I, I get writing in there almost every single time we're at a school. Uh, and, you know, it's really great to see those kids that were learning their letter sounds with me start to make their sentences. I love that. Uh, we always have an active game because after sitting all day in school, you, you need to get the wiggles out. <clears throat> um, here you can see we had a Harry Potter after school program and um, the girls up in the corner are doing some origami for a Japanese holiday in which we yelled at winter to go away. <clears throat> um, and these are just some more of our after school programs. Um, this is our international holidays. Um, <clears throat> so I wanted to include this. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm just getting over a cold. Um, just to give you an idea of what kind of holidays we do. We don't do Christmas, we don't do Hanukkah, and we don't do um, Kwanzaa. It's generally requested that we do this program at the Christmas time, which is why I bring up that we don't do those holidays. Um, we do Farmer's Day in Ghana. That's always a fun one. It's right after Thanksgiving, um, and we make drums, and we listen to African drum rhythms, and we have a drum circle. Uh, we do have a book, but there's no pictures, so um, we don't really read that one. That, that was one of those hard ones. Um, we've done Setsuban, which is Japanese. We yelled at winter to go away. You know, that's, that's always fun in January. Um, this year we celebrated Teacher's Day. Teacher's Day, that's in Costa Rica. Um, and we've done Diwali and We've done Las Posadas as well. You know, we've also done uh, St. Nicholas Day and uh, St. Lucia Day. I try to, whatever holiday is happening, I try to mirror that in the week. Um, I don't think we'll do St. Nicholas Day ever again because I couldn't get them to separate St. Nick from Santa Claus. And so uh, I think we'll just, We'll step away from that one. Um, we also do offer some summer camp programs. Um, we have a lot of fun in the summer. Uh, we do a lot of active games. Last year we did a lot of water games because we were oceans of possibility was our theme. And so we, we had slip and slides. One of our most popular popular games that we played was um, water volleyball with towels. So they had to work together to catch it and fling it back at the other team. Uh, <clears throat> these are generally K-3-6 as well. Um, we do a lot of STEAM activities and uh, you know things can run the gamut from building boats out of boxes to um, making comic books for Superhero Day. So we have, we have a lot of fun, a lot of different kids. Um, one of the programs I like to mention um, is our virtual book club. These are for most, most of our participants are in junior high. We do have uh, one high school student that comes when she's not busy. Um, and we, all the picture, all the books pictured are the books we've read in the last two years. Um, so 
our kids are voracious readers. Um, I have one, one of our middle schoolers, he, he'll read a no, like a Stephen King novel in, in a week on his way to school because he lives in the islands and he goes to Colchester High School. Um, so he, he reads a lot. And then we have another one that's a serial reader and she might still be on page 10. But she's reading four books at once. So. <laughs> Um, so we meet online once a week and we talk about not the whole book because we read it in sections. We talk about the section, um, I, tr whatever book the kids pick, I try to bring back to something that's happening in their world. Um, so we've talked about homelessness in Vermont. We've talked about racism in Vermont. Um, history, animal welfare, sexuality, you know, things that they're coming up with. Um, we also try to talk about genres and, you know, I try to make it a little bit educational, but not too much because I want them to come back. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, the feedback that I get is that they're having lots of fun and they like it. We're currently reading Ready Player One, um, which if you don't know the book, it's set in the future, but it's all 80s references and all video games. So I think we're going to have a little bit of fun with this one. Um, so everything else that we do, um, we offer occasionally, when I have enough volunteers, um, school break book bags and that's um, you know during February and April school breaks um, I'd love to offer it in the summertime but I don't have the logistics down yet um, and we give you we give each kid three th two to five books depending on age and length um, with screen free activities not necessarily to go along with the book, but just to keep you off your phone. Um, and they're tailored to the kids' interests and their reading level and their age. So we try to keep it um, pretty tailored. Parents can tell us what their kids like and we'll do our best. Um, we have a lot of they're like new books, um, so we're not, that have been donated. So that is what we use these for, is for giveaways. Um, that's been really, really popular, and a lot of people have been requesting it, so I'm hoping to offer it more in the future. Uh, we also have a seed library, um, which again is volunteer based. Uh, where um, we, you know, unlike most libraries that have a seed library, we deliver them to you. Um, so if you tell us where you live and you can pick out the different seeds that we have available on our website, we bring them to you. Um, we try to do it weekly, but if we don't have enough volunteers, it might be every couple of weeks. Um, and we get a lot of people from that, people that we do, wouldn't normally touch because they don't necessarily have kids. Um, and so that's, that's a really great way to get them in. Um, we also um, do a couple of senior visits. Uh, this started because one of the local librarians said to me, hey, I have some patrons who can't get out. It's, it's icy. It's winter, they don't drive, they don't have family, but they want to they want to come to the library, they want books and want to read. So we found a little bit of funding to be able to go to some um, neighborhoods in Swanton and in St. Albans to offer books to people who just can't get out in the winter time. Um, and that's been very popular. We partner with Sash for that, so um, that way we know where to go and we have a, already, we have somebody on the ground to talk to people to make sure that we're wanted there. Um, 
So that that's that's new. That's in its infancy, but um, it seems to be good. They're they're always surprised. Oh, you have adult books too. <laughs> um, so, and that is that is everything I I had made as slides and planned to talk about. Um, this is story time on the bookmobile, and uh, as you can see, we're 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 reading and we're having fun. You know, each story time visit, I try to do an activity with the kids. If it's nice out, we'll be outside. If it's not nice out, it'll be small and it'll be in the bookmobile. Any questions? Yeah, yes. Your, your, your the after school programming. Yes. Uh, you do that at the. Do you take the bookmobile with you, or is it just just you do it in the school? You're doing you do it in the school building, right? We do it in the school building. Um, sometimes, if they request us to bring the bookmobile, we'll talk. We'll we'll do that. Like right now, our after school program is bringing the bookmobile up to Richard because they don't have a school librarian. So their kids don't have any library books right now. And their town is also losing their lives, their town librarians. So, you know, we, we're, we're trying to offer them books that way. Um, so it depends on, on what they request. Um, sometimes it's just us going into the school with activities and books to read um, if, that's what they're, if that's what they're looking for. Um, and the same goes for the summer camp program. We have brought the bookmobile to summer camp um, if it was a request. And I, I should say too that last, um, in our 2022 fiscal year, we saw 403 children um, and 264 of those were new to us that year. And I think we're gonna have more this year as well. Um, and we gave away 1,907 books. So we are, we're trying, we're trying to get those literacy rates up. Um, I'm just curious, uh, you mentioned at the start of your talk that things were changing at the Bookmobile. Yeah, just... so some of the changes are, um, we've added, um, the senior stops, but we're also um, part looking to partner with uh, Maple Run School District and other school districts to be able to expand our programs, um, to have kindergarten readiness, to have more kindergarten kindergartners ready for school, um, and changing, you know, the science of reading um, is what some of the schools are transitioning to for next school year and that focuses more on reading comprehension as opposed to sight words okay thank you you're welcome yes so Hadley, like how can um i guess we help i know uh do you need more like adult books or young a ya books i feel like those are always the ones that people need but um, what, what's like, what's like an ask of this group or, or people in our networks? Um, I guess one of the biggest um, needs that we have right now is um, large print books for some of our seniors. Mm -hmm. um, we have, we have two, <laughs> we have two large print books in our collection. That's it so far. Um, children's books, we are, we, we have an abundance. So we are, we are good there. Um, I guess the other um, thing that I would ask if you know anyone who's looking for volunteer hours um, during the day we don't have a lot in the evenings or weekends but I'm always looking for people who want volunteer time during the week um, I know that's hard for a lot of people who work um, homeschool high schoolers you know sometimes they're looking for things to do because they're bored um, the, they can help with story time as well. Um, and it's gonna sound weird, but clean recycled materials, um, like toilet paper rolls or um, boxes that we can make things out of for crafts. 
those are always good too. Do you guys have like a storage unit where you keep everything or is it all on the Um, we, we do have a storage unit <clears throat> that was donated to us. Um, and so we have a, uh, mostly the books that we give away are store, uh, stored in there, but I do have some other seasonal items and um, craft supplies that we're not using right at the moment. Yes, Eric. So thank you for asking since you asked. Um, most of you know me as the regional director for Vermont Adult Learning, but my super secret superhero identity is as the treasurer for the Pokemon well, <laughs> If any of you are having issues closing your wallet, maybe there's too much cash <laughs> in <you're thinking laughs> extra space, and you can't fit it in your pocket, or your purse, your handbag, I can help you with that problem if you want to free up some excess space, you can just hand me some of that extra cash on your way out, and I will see that it gets into the Bookmobile's <laughs> bank account to help with additional services. And additional I feel like books. you were making eye contact with me, and I'm not entirely sure why. <laughs> <laughs> That's the longest title in the room. So I'm making the most money. Yeah. To be fair, I just got a check from Amy, so she sent yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Um, not only can you donate materials and, um, and and cash, but the bookmobile drives around our communities as a great advertising space as well. So the Franklin Grand Isle Tobacco Prevention Coalition for a long time has ad, ad, had ads for 802 quits um, and other tobacco related stuff on the side. So it's a great way to, um, to get your message out there, but also support the bookmobile, which I have done for, I don't know, death forever. I'm saying death because death got me started. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. I'm going to pretend that's why you've been looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot. <laughs> yes. It sounds like um, you guys are working a lot with the schools for kindergarten readiness. How about daycares? How many daycares in Franklin County do you serve? Um, we are seeing, I believe it's, a, I want it 12 to 14 on a regular basis. Um, I have a couple others that we were seeing. And then they had staffing problems, so they've asked us to wait until they are able to have visits again. Um, so it, it, I want to say solidly 12, but up to 16 at the moment. And hoping to expand that um, throughout the summer into next school year. We have a hand on the screen too, Deb, if you want to go ahead and unmute. Thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to um, say, I'm, you know, full disclosure, I'm also a board member uh, with uh, Eric, but not as important as holding the money. So that's good. Uh, yeah. They don't trust me with that. But I'm really grateful to have Hadley at the helm here. And you can see all the, the all the work she's been doing for the last few years. And um, it's really paying off. And I just want to, you know, in, in true form with the partnership, you know, we, we wouldn't, be able to do what we do without the community support and you know all the donations and the partnering and the advertisements and um yeah so just you know being a little ambassador when it comes up about all that we do and the opportunities that we can uh share not only with kids and families but with uh senior citizens and others in the community for events um you know, we're all about it. So, you know, not just a flat out cash donation, but just it being our partner is uh, is really important. And yeah, maybe maybe sending some volunteers our way. So I just wanted to chime in and, and say thank you, Hadley. What a great presentation. Thank you. Other questions? For a second, I thought someone accidentally called it a bus or a van and that was coming. Uh, <laughs> the only other thought I had, Hadley, was I know a lot of high schools require students to do community service hours, so I don't know if there's any partnering potential with high school students to get their hours in and support the bookmobile. I reached out to um, both MVU and um, St. Albans and we haven't gotten a ton of volunteers from them and I, I'm not really sure why. We do get um, students for our big rig day, which that is one other thing I want to let you know is coming up on 
April 29th, the last Saturday of the month, um, is our big rig day. We do have students who volunteer and help with um, traffic control and other um, as needed throughout the, the event. Um, but for some reason, doing the, like, coming to the bookmobile and even sorting through books doesn't seem to be a big draw for them. Um, and I'm not sure why. I would I would have found it fun, but. <laughs> I reached out to Dante Napolitano at, um, at MVU because the National Honor Society kids also need community yes. service hours. Yes, uh, Amanda Garnier um, has already started rounding kids up. <laughs> um, and the other, um, the, You'll have to help me out, Joe. The rotor rack kids? Oh, interact. Interact kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the interact kids um, will be helping with a project this spring. Um, and then the rotary will be following up on their projects. So uh, we do have we do have some kids that way. Any other questions? So I found it interesting, you know, a lot of what's happening and certainly the inclusion of seniors, because as we know, the county and the state continues to age as evidence. <laughs> speak. Uh, I didn't say it. <laughs> yeah, you didn't say a word, but, uh, but you know, I, looking through that lens, I see a lot of opportunity there in the future for you as well. Mm -hmm. And I think um, so many people think of the bookmobile and they think of youth and, and all of that. Yes. But you know, you're really now going across the entire, you know, life cycle. Uh, We're trying. With what you're what you're trying to introduce at various stages. So I think that's rather intriguing and away from a positioning standpoint of what the bookmobile stands for today. Yes. That's a bit different than what most people might think. And I think like so often Every month we hear a presentation in this room and we always learn things that are being done by an organization that we're familiar with, but we certainly don't have all the ins and outs of, from a strategy standpoint, you know, what might be new and, and this is a perfect case of that. So I think you're doing some, some great things and, you know, especially coming out of the pandemic and, and that type of thing, I uh, just think it's great. Yes, and we do have virtual options too. So, you know, um, if you can't make it in person or uh, like last week I lost my voice so I had to do virtual story time as opposed to in-person story time. Um, so we do, we are able to be a little more nimble that way as well, um, which I think helps a little bit too. Yeah, teleconferencing has kept us connected in a way that we weren't thinking as much, or certain segments that were prior to, but it's really been very helpful for those that can't be in person, but yet you keep something moving forward because you can still stay connected and see one another as opposed to a phone call or yeah, something. Yes. Any other questions? I think the only thing I'll say is I'm just going to plant a seed and I'll water it later. So we're still planning on doing uh, the recovery block party in St. Albans. We just haven't chosen the date, so I haven't announced it uh, too, too much, but we'll definitely be reaching out. Definitely. It looks, I was sad that we missed it last year. It's all good. It's all good. I, I know uh, a new group picked it up um, and we're kind of taking the torch from the DeFrancos who do, did an amazing job, but we'll definitely reach out because I think the van, there's something about, even when I see it go by, it brings yeah. a smile. So, yes. and I know I'm not the only one, so we'll definitely make sure to reach out again. Definitely. Thanks, Happy. Yeah. Okay, speaking of, and uh, Hadley had mentioned already that on April 29th there's the Big Rig Day. Uh, does anyone else have any upcoming events or initiatives you'd like to talk about, Denise? Jim Basha Fund Run. So I think everybody knows what the Jim Basha Fund is. It's our um, basically our very local, very micro cancer support fund. 
Um, and it's all uh, donations, and that money goes to applicants who are experiencing whether a uh, catastrophic event or um, cancer-related illness. And the run is on, and I'm not going to have it pulled up in my May calendar. 7. May, May 7. 7th. The run is on May 7th. Amy, thank you. Um, it's at the complex. It's $40. You get a t-shirt. Um, we're definitely in the place right now where we're trying to get people to sign up for the run um, because that's really our largest fundraiser for that um, event, for that fund. Um, but it's a very micro fund. It funds local families that are experiencing cancer-related illness or catastrophic um, events. And every grant is $500. Uh, it could be for transportation. It could be for medical bills. It could be for whatever. It's, it's the only fund that I know that goes directly to people um, that need funds in a really um, uh, vulnerable point of their lives. Um, and we have the committee at NMC that reviews all the applications. We try to stay true to the mission of the fund um, and provide money to people when they need it most. My big event coming up. Not an event, but an ongoing need. Um, we have a desperate need for mentors in Franklin Grand Isle County. Um, we have a waiting list of kiddos, um, and it grows every day. So if um, folks have an hour or two week to spare, um, we do request a one year minimum um, for a match, and we do train mentors. I see Matthew has a hand on the Zoom. Yes, this is Matthew. Let me grab my own. Yeah. Uh, for, the, for upcoming events, you know, our community, our students, our future, creating opportunities and reducing barriers for all students, the community conversation will be held at Saturday, April 15th from 9 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. And I already posted out in the last uh, Franklin Grand Isle uh, partnership you know, fire, but I also up that thing up there to the Maple Run School Union District. That's Bill uh, Kimbo area. Uh, and I got the updated Google form, RSP form, RSP form that uh, I'll send in the coming days, hopefully you can get out this week. Uh, to basically RSP if you want to come to attend that morning. Uh, I'll be there. The whole equity team will be there. The district school will be there. Uh, so just to give you an FYI, heads up, you know, that on Saturday, April 15th from 9 a.m. to 2.30 p.m., uh, to come out and join, join us all for something, you know, as a school district, it's actually want to move forward with inclusion, diversity, equity, and, you know, a sense of belonging, but also acceptance of all students, you know, statewide, but also countywide, too, as well. I think, you know, for me, this is an important step moving forward for all school districts in Vermont. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Matthew, will you, is that going to be included on the list? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Matthew usually sends those for the weekly updates. So yeah, Matthew, if you want to continue to send your updates to the FGI Community Partnership email, uh, that would be great, and I'll include it on Friday. Yeah, and get it out as soon as possible because it's April 15th is the event, and it's on Saturday. So we decide to do it Sunday, but you know, with religious groups, you know, off it for Saturday. So that's the only reason why we do this for just for Saturday that day. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, I guess I'll go next since I'm already kind of talking for the Howard Center and I'll do a share screen. So there's a few different things coming up for Howard Center. One is the annual conference, Breaking Barriers. Um, we've got an amazing slate of speakers that will be in person at this event, which is at the Doubletree by Hilton Hotel. Um, Dr. Nadine Burke Harris, who many people are familiar with. Um, if you look at the lineup, it's a pretty remarkable uh, group of individuals that are going to come speak at this event. So there is a fee for registration, $199. Uh, it's an 
it's important if you want to go in person to register as soon as possible because the capacity has almost been met. And I know there's a group of us from St. Albans that are Franklin County that are planning on going. I'd love to see lots of representation from Franklin County going. Uh, but also, if people want to join virtually, there's no maximum on how many people can join virtually. So that's one of the events. The other event I want to share, which is open to both partners and public, is a spring community education series. Um, and this is free and open to the public. So on, and I apologize, I didn't say the date of the last one. So the conference is on, or if I did say the date, I apologize, but it doesn't hurt to hear it twice. So April 19th, uh, 8.30 to 4.30. For the spring conference, or sorry, the spring training, the first training is Ernie and Joe, the Crisis Cops. It's a film screening and panel presentation. That is on April 13th, 6.30 to 8 p.m. And then the second training is uh, Racial Trauma and Generational Healing on May 18th from 7 to 8 o'clock. And again, these are free, open to the public, and Zoom. And they are, will go out again in the weekly updates on Friday. Um, tomorrow is prevention day down at the state house where young people and not young people are going to go and try to um, raise awareness about uh, ways that we can continue to prevent substance use in our communities and that's me also reminding you all that there's several bills related to substance misuse prevention working their way through the um, legislature um, and Although I cannot ask you to ask you to do anything in particular on any specific bill, I can say if you have opinions or if you want your legislator to know how you feel, they do listen. Whether they um, vote your way or not, it, you know, they can only vote one way, but um, they listen. Uh, so feel, feel free to reach out and make your voice heard. When we don't speak, the industry, like the tobacco industry, speaks. Um, and they speak loud, and they speak well, and they speak in multiple different ways. If you go to um, convenience stores, sometimes they have flyers and QR codes, and they are encouraging people and owners to, to speak. I don't have the ability to do that in, in any meaningful way, but you all do um, have the ability. I'm just going to join it on that and just say that Amy and I have been in probably about 60 different classrooms uh, <laughs> since the beginning of the school year. We're tired. And, uh, <laughs> We are tired, but S18 is a very important bill to pay attention to. It is now moved to the House, so um, take a look at that one. It's, a, it's the labor ban. Yeah. Is that neutral enough? It was close that to was neutral. beautiful. That was it was close was to neutral. neutral. <laughs> yeah. Cross any lines. <laughs> any, anyone else? Well, I will say we, meaning NCSS. We just got one hand that raised. Oh. So Janine Flurry just raised her hand. Hi, sorry, I just realized, um, I know Eric shared that our Energy Works training, uh, our Energy Works free job training program has a weatherization opportunity coming up in Colchester in uh, at the end of April. And I also realized that while not an event, this is a good group to inform that Vermont Adult Learning is the um, Hannaford Helps beneficiary for the month of April. So if any of y'all are shopping at the Hannaford in St. Albans this month, we get a cut of any of the reusable bags that are the, it's a specific reusable bag, but um, we get a dollar back from all of those purchases. So I realized this is a good group to inform of that. Um, so those are the two pieces from Vermont Adult Learning. So I expect all of you to show up. You know, I'm going to piggyback on that. If, you know, kudos to Hannaford for having that program because I know many of your organizations have been chosen at various times of the year. And let's face it, every dollar helps. People are always buying reusable bags. And, uh, you know, uh, I just think it's a terrific program from that organization to help in the community. Uh, I was going to mention uh, it's more of a cause related event, so I realize it doesn't have the wide um, breadth perhaps of some other uh, initiatives, but NCSS will have our eighth annual uh, autism walk on May the 21st at Collins Burley. 
and uh, we're going to have more activities than ever before. The big blue truck is going to be there with a variety of train and some other uh, things for kids to do, bouncy houses, all kinds of, plus the walk itself. But it's really a cause-related event for you know individuals and families that have been affected uh, either through autism or other developmental delays. And uh, it's just a nice afternoon to kind of get out and uh, you know have a good time and be with others who are you know dealing with the same type of circumstances, even though every person on the spectrum is totally different. So anyway, that'll be May twenty-first uh, at one o'clock. Anyone else have anything um, you want to bring up at this point? And if not, then you're going to have gotten something unusual this morning, other than candy, talk, <laughs> and that is some found time. So that's never a bad thing. Uh, we could all use that. Everybody's very busy. So uh, the meeting will come to a conclusion. We will reconvene on Wednesday, May the 3rd. Same as we are today, in person and via Zoom. And uh, with that, the, uh, Joe, yes. What, one sec, not really an announcement, but uh, there will be a second. Is that possible? Yes, yeah, second. 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 <laughs> well, there is a second. He's done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bess O'Brien, the Vermont uh, filmmaker who does documentary films, is doing a documentary film on food security and housing security. And I know she spent, she spent about two hours last Tuesday filming and interviewing at our food shelf. And I know she's been to several other organizations, uh, including Healthy Roots and everything. And she's not sure when the film will be done, but uh, when the film is finally ready for production, it will feature uh, several of our providers and you know several people from Franklin County. And among other things, she would like to do a screening. She wants to do a screening or a presentation of the film at, at our food shelf building in, in Sheldon when she's ready to when it's ready to go to press. But uh, I think she's put a lot of work into this. She's interviewed a lot of people, you know, the, the people who are affected by housing and, and food security and uh, as well as a lot of the organizations that support uh, you know food shelves and uh, and, and that support the, the housing initiative. So I think it'll be really interesting when she finally gets it done. Not sure when she'll get it done, but she'll let us all know. I'm going to note too, I'm so happy you said that. So uh, Bess O'Brien also did a film called I Am From Here, and there's a big push to try to get it shown in the schools right now. Uh, somebody reached out to me about it as well. I reached out to Northwest Access TV, who so amazingly said that they would also stream it. So encouraging people to, um, if you have good connections at any of the schools, to encourage them to show the film. It's only a half hour film, and it was filmed in Vermont. Um, and I think it would be powerful to have shown across the state of Vermont. And that's also another Bess O'Brien project. Okay. See what happens when you are about to say a meeting is over. Some, yeah, great, some, some, great, some great things come of it. So, Can I add uh, one? Yes. <laughs> and it's, you know, I think I've, I've mentioned it in a couple of other meetings, but I think it's important for um, housing and what's going on in housing in our region, but um, I'm the chair of the Planning Commission for the City of St. Albans, mm -hmm. and we just approved um, an overlay district over service industrial sites. Um, this is specifically affecting the Fonda plant, and the overlay district is for um, multi-dwelling housing. Um, and so it has two more readings um, at City Council, so it's gotta go through City Council before it's actually in effect, but this be is because a developer is looking at the Fonda site as a possible housing project and um, you know we have to do infill we have wastewater and sewer in the city of st albans and so the more we can add housing within the communities that have um, sewer and uh, water the better so anyways we're really excited about this i think it's a really good project i think um, it's going to create more dwelling units for um, people in our region um, i think it's more in line with um, workforce housing potentially like but that we need that as as well as um, uh, Section Eight and other types of housing. So, I know the Welcome Home Initiative. We're expecting somewhere on the order of twenty or thirty units to be coming available to be you know to be occupied here over the next couple of months between now like between now and the end of June. So, we're kind of gearing up for having a lot of uh, hopefully being able to provide a lot of support to people moving into housing, getting transitioned. 
permanent housing? Um, the other thing that maybe you guys might hear about um, throughout the community is um, uh, migrants coming through the Canadian border. Um, I guess in St. Johnsbury, there was a family that was dropped off at the rest area in St. Johnsbury by the Canadian uh, US, US Border Patrol because they didn't know patrol. what else to do with them. They're most likely coming um, tra transitory, so they're not here for long. They're usually finding another place to go, but because the Mexican border, they're, they're usually legal, so they've already, they, they're seeking asylum. So they're going up through the northern route. Um, I'm not quite sure how they're doing that, but they're flying into Canada and then coming down. You might know more about this, Mary, or I don't know talking about. But so it might impact our region. I know Erin Creeley has been pulling together some people to talk about this in our region um, and how we respond to it if we see um, if, our, if, if we can provide services, if they show up at the hospital, that type of thing. So I'm just making kind of make sure people are aware. There is some work being done. If you have any questions, contact BDH because I think they're the ones that are taking the lead on it. Yeah. The other thing that's also happening, which we haven't talked about, is that there are people who are coming up to the Canadian border to cross over into Canada, and mostly they are doing that um, by stopping in Plattsburgh and then taking a taxi to either the Champlain border or Albert. Albert. And so, but that is also um, they're coming folks up. seeking seeking entry into Canada. Um, and Canada is an island. Only in certain cases. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, so the potential to have people stuck. Yeah. So yeah. People yeah. moving and it's, yeah, it's impacting our region not as much as it is impacting the southern regions, region, so but it's definitely going to be impacting the border. So. So. Right. So people are aware. I've also seen the border patrol with two vehicles dropping off about eight ladies. I was on the run with my dad having lunch yeah. and eight ladies piled out of those border patrol vehicle, border patrol left them there because they went back to the border. Mm -hmm. So I witnessed it. It's happening yeah, it's here, here too, not just the in St. John's Yeah, I think that, the, I think what Aaron said is they're mostly here for a couple of days while they make their way south to Connecticut or New York or other places, but they're so if they're definitely like, coming through our region. Mm -hmm. If they're claiming asylum at the border, they typically have about three days before they need to make it to New York City or Boston for their hearings. So um, they have that couple of days where they're in transit or in flux. Um, we used to deal with it a lot when I was working EMS. And they're not always, I mean, they might be lacking some resources, but I think they're planned forward. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was with the articles that I read that they, they have the money to get to the place, but not the money to, if there's like holdups, like being dropped at the welcome center. Right. <laughs> right, 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 right. How do you get a ride from there, right? Those kinds of things. So. Yeah. yeah. Now, now you can adjourn. Now you can <laughs> well, it, it's something sweet. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. Well, you're right, though. I mean, this this is something in Denny's that you know we need to be aware of. It's happening, so no yeah. fights at the candy bar. Can't uh, put our heads in the sand, right? Yeah. No fights at the candy bar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no fights. Okay, so the meeting now is officially adjourned. Thank you, everyone. See you next month. So, if anyone was interested in the um, our.